Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on advanced scientific prog uh, scientific computation with Python. Now, uh, this is actually the introduction video and uh, just a reminder to all of you guys, this video is going to be a really long one because I'll be talking about basics and everything and I'm going to take this in more or less in one stretch. So if you guys find this video to be too long or something, do take pauses in between and uh, we we'll come back come back once in a while to continue uh, continue the video so sorry about that uh, i'll do my best to cut short if possible or else for the continuity i'll make it big all right now coming back welcome to the series and this series you'll be using uh, we'll be learning about how to use python programming language for the scientific computation now most of you guys who are watching this series who came to this video must be knowing what python is for others i'll just give you a quick introduction Python is actually a programming language, a modern pro interpreted programming language created by Guido von Rossum and several and after him several other people started using this language and started building libraries and other functionalities to it and making it a general purpose language that can be used for any literally any literally any kind of thing like you can use this as a general programming language an object programming language uh, if you want to make uh, games out of it yes if you want to make ob operating systems out of it some parts of the operating system you can do it and uh, like that my python right now has multiple users and uh, python is also ge getting to have a lot of emphasis and a significant Im remark in the scientific com scientific community many people in the scientific community are preferring to use python for their work for because it's uh, because of its various features and advantages now, uh, if you guys want, uh, there are multiple ways to install Python in your system. In your system, okay. Uh, I prefer this. I prefer uh, the Python package given by the company called as Continuum Analytics. Continuum Analytics. Okay. Now, what you have to do is that uh, open your web browser and type Anaconda Python download. Anaconda Python download. So you should get a web page. The first link should be like this. It is this. It is actually the same web page over here. Okay. Now what you have to do is that is that uh, there uh, you just have to pick your operating system. Like this is for Windows. This is for Windows. This is for a Apple, a Mac, and this is for Linux versions. Linux versions. So depending upon the user, you, depending upon the, the operating system you're operating with, you can pick one of any one of these. And then there are two types of uh, uh, Python available. One has one is version two point one is version two, other one is version three. Okay. Now uh, just a little reminder: version two has many uh, for many scientific applications. Lot of programs available. A lot of libraries are already well established and well made in Python 2.7 2 series. Okay, whereas some of the libraries which are available here may not be available in Python 3 series. But Python 2 series is an older one. Python 3 series is a modern one. So as of now, uh, as of now, you can pick any of these, any of these two, any one of these two. I am any one of these two, and I'll be working with Python 2 2, 7, 2 series. But uh, the transition between Python 2 and Python 3 is not at all difficult, it's just a small thing. Okay, and what do you do? Pick either one of these choice. Uh, for now, I'm picking 2.7. I already have it downloaded and installed, so I'm not going to download it again, but it's very easy. Uh, for one, and then uh, check, uh, download your the version based on your operating system. This is for a 64-bit Linux. This is for a 32-bit Linux. So pick one accordingly based on your operating system. And then, once you download, once you download it, open a terminal like this the instruction is fairly straightforward so after downloading the installer in the open a shell term shell terminal go to the place where the file is downloaded and type bash and then followed by the name bash and followed by the name that's it and it will give you it will tell you to give it will give you a big uh, list big uh, message stating like an end of users rises agreement something of that sort you have to go through that read through it and then click yes and it'll start installing automatically now as for that is i mean that's that's it for now and with that your python installation is over now let's let's begin with okay now to begin with what do you do open a terminal you don't don't worry about this 
open a terminal and go to a place where you have kept your file where you wanted to work with uh, create your files and all okay now uh, in my system i have installed both python 3 and python 2 so i just have to change the environment so i have to type a code like source activate uh, okay this is actually the nickname for my python 2 series environment so i have to click that and go about with it but you don't you guys do not have to do anything about it okay now once this is done once this is done you don't have to you can skip that now uh, to make sure that whether your python is working nice what you do is that like if your installation is working fine type python type python and press enter and you should get something similar to this python 2.7.10 slash anaconda a version like this and then some instructions like this and so on if you get something like this your python has been, is installed perfectly now for just to check we need this python basic python if you want to get out of it use this exit uh, open brackets curl, close brackets and then what you do check for ipython okay like the same you should get the exactly the same message as you get on the top but little modification that's not a problem like python 2.7.10 anaconda 2.2.0 uh, 64 bit nothing like that and you should get like this what's the difference i'll explain you guys in a minute as to what th what these mean and then finally uh, make sure that uh, uh, type ipython notebook and press enter when you enter that uh, you're from the default default browser of your system okay you should get something like this uh, something like a local host colon double double slash three a web page something like this should open okay and if this if this is done your ipython notebook is also ready ready and now ready and now you're good to go good to begin with now let me explain what what i what i did over here here I just I, since I had two versions of Python installed in my system I have to swap the environments and I'm using Swift, I wanted to use 2.7 uh, Python 2 Python 2 series but the default Python I've installed in my system is 3 series so I have to shift it to 2, two series so I use this command to change it with this py, py27env is actually the name I given it for the 2 series you don't have to do anything if you have installed 2, two series you don't have to do anything you can just directly open the terminal and start with working with okay and now uh, this part where was it yeah this part where i written python okay this is actually the command that you use to invoke the python shell within your all within your shell program here once you do that you have your shell ready and from which you can type all your commands and everything like this python type this and you can type like h equals six okay print h like that you can type your commands get the output and everything so on and so forth now okay that's about your python shell now about your python we'll we'll explain i'll go to the i'll explain all this in very detailed in, in the coming presentation okay and uh, regarding ipython what this is what this is is simple it's imagine this to imagine your python edit python shell with a little bit of normal shell features and a uh, little more fancy uh, fancy uh, fancy operations that's it that is your Pyth that is your ipython ipython is a special kind of python python shell which ha which has in uh, which has features of your basic uh, shell program basic shell program of your window uh, linux or mac okay and then a little more of additional features to make it uh, make it uh, to make your shell even more robust and versatile so like that uh, you can do the same thing over here like print h same thing over here it works the fine it works the same okay now your ipython notebook is actually a, is actually a, a even more a developed version of uh, shell your ipython your ipython shell but the only thing is it gives you a kind of a notebook like a feature to work with it we'll come to the notebook part in some other some other video okay now let's begin uh, let's begin with our work now what you have to do is that once all of this is done type spider spider 
okay type that and press enter uh, if you are our uh, anaconda python installation works fine anaconda uh, python installation works fine you should in any second get your get the bug di dialog box like this when you type spider and it will loading up yeah perfect now i'll explain you guys what this is let me just open a new file save it in the inside this this is where i kept uh, tutorial.py .py is the extension of python so keep it like this and press and press save okay now i'll explain you guys what this is spider is actually the short form of scientific python development environment it is a simply an ide okay which uh, which has a lot which lot of advantages features it's a very light small very lightweight ide okay here you have the editor section wherein you can write your python python scripts programs and uh, python programs and all with when it also has uh, spider has fe features to make it easy for you to edit and all okay and here is your console here is where your python shell is uh, will be available you have by default you have a normal log, uh, ipython console here okay a history log where all the comments that you have entered so far for the past few days or something will be available here and then in your console you will have a basic kernel don't worry about this and then you'll also have a, ba a default python kernel available here okay now for all our practical purposes let's not worry about that we'll be uh, talking only about uh, your ipython console because that is more advanced uh, this is a little more advanced okay and uh, on on here what you have is that you have three tabs one is an object inspector wherein it will the wherein if you have any queries and questions regarding here okay all those contents will be displayed when you ask for help and then next what you have is a variable explorer what this does is that it collects all the variables that are being handled in the memory in the console and prints them over here with the values uh, the name the values the data type and uh, maybe how long it is all of them will be printed over here will be displayed over here so that you can just have a check as to what's going on and everything and this this is kind of very useful at least for beginners it's very very useful and then in, in this third tab what you have is that you have uh, you have a file explorer through which you can access directories and change directories and everything okay now what i do is that go to the data sets i mean this folder where and that's where i saved my file tutorial.py if you can guys can see yeah this one this is the file i saved it over there and now what i do is that triple click this address over here click copy okay and now what i go what i do is that go to the console and uh, yeah and one more thing guys i'm recording my full screen over here so make sure it, make sure that you watch this in a, a reasonable good high definition so that everything comes clean okay that's about it and then what i do is that after i copy the contents from here copy the contents from here okay the path from here i just type pwd it's actually a shell command to show tell the current working directory and if you see this working directory and this working directory are not the same to, uh, you have to set this properly what I do is that I do make the working directory same I just press CD and then uh, copy the copy the working directory here and then enter okay now this is the working directory and this is the working directory both of them are the same to check whether the working directory is changed or not I just have uh, PWD again yeah now the working this working directory and this working directory are the same okay and to confirm it press ls to see all the files that are over here reappearing here if these are done then you're good to go this is kind of import important if you're especially using your files to handle data from other file if your file has to access data from other files at all this is kind of important okay now these are the preliminary settings now these are the preliminary settings okay <coughs> now let's go with the now let's go with the tutorial now let's go with the tutorials okay and the uh, lecture thing 
okay now what i do is that i just already have a presentation here i'll explain i welcome you guys formally for my uh, tutorial session tutorial session actually this tutorial session i'm i'm conducting i'm conducting this my, i'm conducting this in my department center for atmospheric and oceanic sciences of indian institute of science uh, between 11th august and 15th august and during the process i did rec i did, uh, kind of video record this entire lecture but for some reason the audio quality was not good so but the people were requesting me to take a video of it and so that they can also have a look at it so that's why i'm doing this again but at the same way, same time i thought okay i'm just recording this video why don't put this in youtube as a channel as a separate uh, playlist so that's what i thought okay the, that's so that's why you're here and i had to thank my friends chetan aditya and arijit for their assistance in giving me inputs and inputs and suggestions to make this uh series as well as the workshop as i'm connecting connecting okay and uh, just a little of overview this is just a overview for that you don't have to worry about it okay and uh, this this is actually meant for the this benefits of this thing is actually meant for uh, uh, my first years and second years but i'll be explaining you guys to you guys as well because this is applicable for you guys as well see for those people who haven't worked with programming before programming for uh, the short term benefits are that this will be you will be in a position to uh, have a tool to solve simple problems and you will gain a reasonable amount of comfort and confidence uh, slowly by in the in the process in the uh, in the process and many people uh, in some countries uh, and in some institutions what happened is that people uh, learn a lot of theoretical courses uh, subjects and have uh, others but they don't uh, but they don't get to use programming or related scientific tools or related mm -hmm. computer tools so what happens is that they when uh, what happens is that when they learn the theory and everything it all goes smooth and fine but all of a sudden when they go to research when it comes to research these guys find it really hard because when they going to go to research they need some scientific tools which is not available with them at that time so it's like you have a massive break ice that is be behaving in, uh, acting in between and the transition is like uh, very hard for these some people so what this work what this tutorial series and this workshop actually serves as it serves as an ice break to smoothen the transition between the class to research okay that's about that's about this part and then as if you guys are first years in any masters course or in a bachelor's degree course or even your phd okay and if you are you are taking a lot of subjects and uh, with the subjects and courses you can use the uh, whatever skills we learn in this tutorial series for doing your assignments and everything this is uh, i mean this is applicable for everybody but you know uh, i made this keeping in mind the first years of my department so it's applicable for everybody and uh, on a long term basis a uh, long term basis what are the benefits you'll get is that uh, when you have finished this properly uh, whatever skills you learn over here will be applicable directly in research first thing second of all second of all uh, i may i kind of tailor made this in such that okay you might you will be in a position to have a have a, a nice understanding of the some uh, fundamental concepts fundamental concepts so that it can help you to cut down your research timings sometimes most of the time what people do is when they do research at least in my experience uh, when they do research a uh, considerable amount of time is actually spent for finding a uh, finding certain functions available in the internet to do certain process and all everything uh, i just hope that my tutorial series is able to cut down cut down this pre research timing considerably like that and then uh, you'll have but if you go finish this series you'll have a reasonable amount of solid your your knowledge will be reasonably reasonably solid so that if you have any queries or questions or any other if you want to move to even advanced topics you'll be in a position to move further without any issue that's about that and uh, uh, here's a here's a here's a tricky question why python now uh, to explain this i just try to explain this in a funny manner there is this core there is this comic uh, from uh, xkcd.com okay they made a core they made a funny comic like this i just give you the gist of it these are two guys who started learning programming quite some time ago okay uh, one guy uh, but uh, but but the problem is both of them are not in a position to uh, learn things faster okay one guy 
started learning python the previous night and started implementing whatever he know in other programming languages in python and to his surprise he was able to understand everything in a very short, understand and uh, implement things in a very very fast time very quickly very quickly that he started to fly <coughs> so what is literally meaning here, what is literally meaning here is that as and when he started learning python all of his programming skills have improved uh, very quickly and he faced a steep learning curve and as a as a consequence he started getting more freedom and compared other learning lang- other lang- languages and he's encouraging other people other pe- his other friend to jo- also join the join the club okay this is maybe a little bit of an exaggeration but it kind of proves a point uh, it seems that many people who learn python learn a lot of advanced programming concepts a little faster when compared to others so it's kind of like that so that's actually on a funny note but on a serious note why python see it's a first of all it's a free and open source cr- open source program and it's also cross platform that's why you're able to install this in linux windows and mac and it's an object oriented programming language it's a modern language and it's an interpreted programming language so base if it's open i mean if it's object oriented you can do a lot of complicated arithmetic complicated options and all programming uh, programming abstractions modern which is a modern what it means by modern is that uh, you have a lot of features that make it do a lot of uh, advanced options which are not which may not be available in other programming languages and it is an interpreted language what it means that is that it compiles every line one, uh, the program gets compiled one line one line after the other it has a disadvantage because this makes the program run execution a little slow but another advantage is that you, you, you know, when you compile it you don't when you execute the statements you don't have to execute an entire full flesh program every single one you can execute it one statement of the other so like that and there are other advantages like uh, it's very flexible very little overhead prerequisite and everything you can work with unix linux unix unix linux shells easily and it's very easy uh, good choice for uh, pro- learning programming from scratch to advanced levels yeah and one more thing is it's very friendly it's not very hard and the co- syntax is not very hard and all it's very easy to follow and then it's intuitive and humane meaning some of the concept that you want to explain okay uh, the syntax is made in such a manner many many times the syntax is made in such a manner that it is just easy to go about with it and sometimes it's more or less kind intuitively made such that it, it's easy to follow and then you can combine this with other programming languages that's one of the greatest advantages you have with python and also there are a lot of plotting and visualization tools and uh, tools which can be used to do uh, one dimensional two dimensional three dimensional plot and which are really reasonably good and then you can as i told you earlier you can make by use of python for gui applications operating systems web framework ex- web frameworks and etc and most importantly uh, this uh, since this is free and open source you get to avoid any software piracy issues or license issues and everything in short you can just call this as a swiss army knife meaning a single purpose army knife you can which you can do this is you can use for multiple purposes if you guys don't know what swiss army knife is just check out internet you like it it's like a full fledged i mean python is like a full fledged tool over here that's what i'm trying to mention here and uh, and uh, just one more po- one more point is ab- python absolutely advantages no ab- no of course not okay reason is uh, because it's uh, it's just one another programming language and it's not at all perfect I mean in a sense there are I mean each language has its own advantages and disadvantages and because of that you can say that by Pyth- you can say that maybe python can be relatively advantages when compared to other programs or it may be relatively slow or something when compared to other programs so it's uh, there's always a compromise so if you ask me is python a completely ab- ab- advantages program no it's not but the thing the thing is at least for scientific computing it has a lot of certain it has a lot of features to make certain operations done very easily and nicely when compared to other programs and uh, it's when done when done properly the program is reasonably fast and uh, it does not help you doesn't break you don't ha- you don't have to break your head a lot to make a lot of answers get a lot of answers and also it has quite less lead time the time taken for to make the programs and all is a little s- Uh, less when compared to other programs wherein this wherein the syntax is a little harder so on a sh- on a summary python is 
a good a, a good programming language no question about that but it is not undisputed meaning it has some issues but it's i guess it's uh, fairly fair enough to accept that all programming languages have their own issues so it's you know it's worth uh, i mean so it's not surprising but truly speaking python can python can be used nicely so the, not only python there are other programming languages that are available for scientific computing and with and uh, at least in earth, earth and atmospheric sciences these are worth experimenting but uh, i wa- i want to um, say that this is only applicable for them the other people other uh, people from other departments like astro science astro physical fluid flows or astronomy or uh, i mean stellar studies quantum mechanics etc etc not only them anybody anybody who is in scientific computing okay they all can have a look and try on r matlab fortran c c++ and all they can all can have a look at these programs to have to uh, and there are several others too they can just can look at look at have a look at these experiment these and even python and then you can decide as to which which you are comfortable at for those people who are already f- familiar with python who want to learn python you are in a good spot for this if you want to experiment uh, you have a lot of options and these four grads ncl ferret and cdat and the cdat these are actually uh, pra- very much applicable for earth and atmospheric science students students people uh, but others can also use it it's you know it's up to your choice and uh, regarding python versions uh, this is something you have to keep in mind very 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 important Python actually comes in two versions namely Python 2 and Python 3. Python 2 is an older version, Python 3 is a newer newer version. Python 2 is re- reasonably stable, tested and has lot of libraries be- built on it, built on it, built made compatible to it and it's very good. As Python 3 is the newer version. And so lot of it's develop it's developing a lot of Python uh, now it's reasonably stable but it's developing and large amount of libraries are being tested continuously. and some libraries and some features are yet to be de- which are available in 2 python 2 are yet to be developed in python 3 now we are in a transition period right in 2015 you are actually in a transition period where where in people are slowly migrating from python 2 to python 3 so as of now you can pick you can pick uh, any pi- any version of python okay if the majority of the libraries that you want to work with are already made in python 3 stick with python 3 otherwise stick with python 2 and then migrate to migrate whenever uh, your li- uh, libraries and things are available okay and now one more thing is python 2 and python 3 both of them are not com- are not compatible I mean you are almost compatible except for a few things that's because the internal architecture uh, in these two in these two python in, the, in these two python f- versions are different So what happens is that some programs that you written in Python through will will Python 2 will throw errors when you execute them in Python 3 console and vice versa. Okay? So thing is when you're learning a Python versions be careful as to know what like what version you're learning. So learn the syntax and everything properly based on the versions and do not mix and match syntaxes they will throw a lot of errors. And definitely keep this keep these two in mind when uh, updating packages and all. Okay, make sure you just install the correct package for Python 2 or Python 3 accordingly. And in the distant future, Python 3 will be the one which will be leading. Python 2 uh, the support for Python 2 will be stopped. So we are in the transition period. At least for the ne- upcoming few years, maybe Python 2 will be still active, but slowly it will be replaced. Okay, as of now we will be using Python 2, but do not worry, the transition is not that difficult. Yeah, and about that. Okay, I guess. uh i guess with this the introduction is over and everything i guess the introduction is over <coughs> i don't mind continuing but i'm just feeling my throat is my throat is feeling a little sore so what i'm going to do i'm going to take a break here okay i'll stop here now in the next tutorial next uh, next tutorial what we'll do is that uh, we'll jump into we'll jump into the programming and uh, programming and everything directly okay thank you guys for watching and i'll uh, see you guys next tutorial then